phase eight of polling has ended with close to 95 million people casting their vote to elect representatives for 64 Lok Sabha constituencies across seven states. Here's a summary on today's polls. Millions of voters across 64 constituencies formed serpentine queues to elect their representatives from among 897 candidates in the frame. So what was the total turnout in the seven states that went into polls today? Uttar Pradesh Number of constituencies, 15 All eyes were glued to the high-profile fight in Amethi as voters exercised their franchise. By around 3 this evening, voter turnout of 43% was recorded in Amethi. Meanwhile, the fight is expected to be between the BJP, SP and Mayawati's Bahujan Samaj party. The Congress too is hoping to put up a good show with the total voter turnout being 55.52%. Andhra Pradesh Number of constituencies 25 Except for a few clashes, Simandra region saw a huge water turnout today. People queued up at the polling booths early in the morning to get their finger inked. While the polling recorded till 5 pm was 74%, and the total turnout was recorded as 76.01%. Bihar Number of constituencies 7. In Bihar, the focus of this round was an RJD chief, Lalu Prasad's comeback bet. His wife and former chief minister, Rabdi Devi, is in the fray in Saran, where the BJP has fielded Rajiv Pratap Rudi. After casting a vote, Rabdi Devi declared that the RJD-led alliance will win all 40 seats in Bihar. Meanwhile, people came out in large numbers and voted for their beloved leaders in the state. The total voter turnout recorded was 58%. West Bengal Number of constituencies, 6. By 5 p.m., West Bengal had already improved its 2009 voting percentage in the six seats, which went to the polls by reaching 80.51%. By the end of the day, West Bengal again had a record-breaking voter turnout to its credit with 81.28%. Himachal Pradesh. Number of constituencies, 4. At the start of the polling, Himachal Pradesh seemed to be heading for a record polling. Thanks to the supportive weather and sustained campaign launched by Election Commission to increase the voting in the hill state. With the heavy turnout of voters in the first half, it led to the expectation of around 75%. And at the end of the day, the voter turnout was recorded at 66.5%. Uttarakhand Number of constituencies, 5. 48% polling was recorded till 3 p.m. in Uttarakhand, where five Lok Sabha seats went to polls in the eighth phase today. Long queues of voters were seen outside polling stations in different parts of the state, waiting for their turn to exercise their right to franchise. By the end of the day, the voter turnout was 62%. Jammu and Kashmir Number of constituencies, 2. Nearly 27% of 1.35 million electorate exercised their franchise up to afternoon in the two parliamentary constituencies of Baramulla and Ladakh, which went to polls amid tight security. The voting in the two constituencies began on a slow note but picked up as the day progressed. The voter turnout by 6 pm was recorded as 49.6%. While the people have cast their votes and barely in 10 days' time, their choice will be announced. A News 9 report. Well, elections have almost reached its last leg, but the verbal volleys between candidates and their aides will never come to an end. Take a look as to what happened today. Verbal volley number one. Smriti Irani versus Priyanka's aide. Yes, the verbal spat of the day erupted between Smriti Irani and Priyanka Gandhi's aide, Preeti Sahai. It all began when Smriti Irani saw Preeti Sahai talking to people who had come to vote and accused her of influencing people on a polling day. Not just that, she also alleged that presence of any of the candidates' aid is a clear violation of the Election Commission's rules. However, Priyanka's aid took Smriti Irani head-on and questioned her presence at the booth in Thori. Take a look at how both tried to show each other the exit. 
चलिए आप लोग बात करिए And well, the actor turned a politician refused to budge until Priyanka's aide left the venue. Smriti Irani alleged that despite several complaints to the election officers, they did nothing about it. On being asked about her presence in the polling booth, she answered by questioning Rahul's visits to various polling booths. अचानक प्रीति सहाय यहाँ आई, वो फिर इस बात का विरोध करने लगी कि सच प्रत्याशी होने के नाते हम यहाँ कैसे रह सकते हैं, जबकि राहुल गांधी हर बूथ पर घूम रहे हैं, प्रीति सहाय यहाँ की स्थानिक महिला नहीं है, स्थानिक ना होने के बावजूद प्रशासन का तो एक दिशा निर्देश था कि पांच तारीख के बाद यहाँ पर हमने प्रशासन से निवेदन किया कि आप अथॉरिटी लेटर खुद देखिए यहाँ पर एक अफसर है राम आश्रय यादव उन्होंने उनको जाने दिया यहाँ पे एक पत्रकार थे उनसे कहा गया कि भाई हमारी रिकॉर्डिंग मत करो तो ये नीच राजनीति पर भाषण देने वाले राहुल गांधी से पूछिए कि ये उनकी राजनीति का प्रमाण है आपको जो करना है आप सुरक्षा के लिए यहाँ खड़े हैं आप इसमें तहकीकात करने के लिए नहीं खड़े हैं आप अपना काम करिए और इनको अपना काम करने दीजिए आने जाने लोग जिसमें करने का लोग ऐसे हैं सुनिए सुनो क्या है आप किसी से बात नहीं करेंगे आप मेरी बात सुनिए सुनो पहले पहले ये आपका काम नहीं जो आपका काम है आप मेरे से पूछिए मैं प्रत्याशी हूँ यहाँ का ना जो हमारे लोग हैं उनको अपना काम करने दीजिए आप अपना काम करिए when a security officer tried to stop Varun's agents from sitting in the polling booth that is how he reacted ऐसे हैं आपको जो करना है आप सुरक्षा के लिए यहाँ खड़े हैं आप इसमें तहकीकात करने के लिए नहीं खड़े हैं आप अपना काम करिए और इनको अपना काम करने दीजिए आने जाने लोग जिसमें करने का लोग ऐसे हैं सुनिए सुनो क्या है आप किसी से बात नहीं करेंगे आप मेरी बात सुनिए सुनो पहले पहले ये आपका काम नहीं जो आपका काम है आप मेरे से पूछिए मैं प्रत्याशी हूँ यहाँ का ना जो हमारे लोग हैं उनको अपना काम करने दीजिए आप अपना काम करिए Though the security officer was delivering his duties, he was threatened by the estranged Gandhi family member. Will the verbal volleys come to an end post-elections? A News 9 report. And well, Monica Lewinsky has been a controversial figure worldwide for her alleged relationship with the former U.S. President Bill Clinton. She has now broken her long silence and made some shocking revelations. Monica Lewinsky breaks her silence. I was made a scapegoat. Monica Lewinsky, Bill Clinton's former intern, when he was the President of the United States, has made some startling revelations this time around. Sure, my boss took advantage of me, but I will always remain firm on this point. It was a consensual relationship. I myself deeply regret what happened between me and President Clinton. Let me say it again, I myself deeply regret what happened. Not just that, she vowed to give her life a better ending and forgetting the dark past with Bill Clinton. It's time to burn the barrette and bury the blue dress. I'm determined to have a different ending to my story. I've decided finally to stick my head above the parapet so that I can take back my narrative and give a purpose to my past. Though back in 1998, the then president had admitted to a relationship with her, he refused to accept the sexual relationship that both shared. Now that Monica decided to emerge out of the shadows of her past, will this provoke the former president to react and come out clean like he always did? A News 9 report.
Well, as D-Day approaches, the market jitters are evident. The benchmark sends X shut shop down 184 points at 22,324 points. But the shocker came in the form of a downgrade on Infosys, Bengaluru's pride in India's second largest IT services exporter. Before the bad news, some silver lining in the form of the rupee. It hit a four-week high on the back of appreciation of the Japanese yen and Malaysian ringgit against the dollar. The rupee closed at 60.13, down a marginal two paise against Tuesday's close. Now the negative news. Leading international broking firm UBS issued the shocker on Wednesday morning, downgrading Infosys to a sell from earlier by recommendation. The broking firm also cut the year-end price target to 2,750 rupees from the earlier 4,050 rupees or a drop of 32 percent. It would be a long wait for a turnaround. The company's excessive focus on margins can hurt. The high level of attrition will impact acceleration. And that was enough for the stock to crash 3 percent and close at 3,064.45 rupees on the BSC. At one point of time, the stock also hit 3,052, a nine-month low. Infosys carried the other IT stocks with itself on Wednesday's downward slide. And if the misery was not enough, Cognizant Technologies has issued an extremely bullish guidance for calendar year 2014, expecting revenues to grow by 16% to touch $10 billion. Meanwhile, India's largest private sector company, Reliance Industries, has announced a decision to slash its expenditure on the controversial KGD6 oil fields. It now plans to spend only $400 million in the year ending March 2015, compared to the $900 million it spent in the year ending March 2014. Reliance Industries, which has been demanding a hike in gas price, also said that the output from the oil field would be 12.4 units against the earlier estimate of 17 units for the year ending March 2015. Brokers are meanwhile advising investors to go light ahead of May 13 when the opinion polls will be announced on which party will emerge triumphant these polls. A News 9 report.